A 3D journalist means a person who can almost do everything in a 3D package. He can model the objects, he can lay the UVs, he can texture them, he can paint them, he can create the characteristics, he can animate the characters, and maybe he can also animate and create the special effects. As a whole, a 3D journalist knows everything in a 3D package, and he may be responsible for creating a complete shot from scratch to polished. So a 3D journalist may have his own pipeline. He may use some 3D packages for blocking out the geometries for modeling. He may take those block out shots to some other application for detailing, or maybe he can just create the UV layouts. He may take those UVs to some other packages and paint them or texture them. He may bring them back. He may create some normal maps for giving the details to the models. He knows everything. He may have his own pipeline. The general pipeline they may use is a 3D package, either the 3ds Max or Maya, or maybe for detailing he may use a ZBrush or some other applications, or maybe he can also, for the texting, he may use some different kind of application, even the ZBrush, the Mudbox, the Photoshop, or everything. A 3D journalist may have his own pipeline, but as a whole, a 3D journalist knows everything in a 3D package and he can work from modeling to the last level of creating some special effects or animating the stuff like that. A 3D journalist may have a great knowledge and he needs to know everything to be a 3D journalist. So this approach of this course is to make you a 3D journalist, meaning you would start from um, creating your models, texture them, and then you may start rigging them or you make it animate them or maybe you make it create some special effects needed. So this approach we will take, uh, we'll take this approach to make you a 3D generalist in this uh, course throughout. So usually how do we divide a 3D generalist work? We are going to see some example to give you some explain and detailed um, view how a 3D generalist can become a very important person in a studio pipeline. So if you take a look at of stages we may start from modeling the stuff if we take a look at a shot here we may have a complete shot here and you can see here is a dish in which is a salad dish we have a spoon right here and we have a fork here a dish here and maybe some kind of vegetables right down here so if we take a look at that a 3D journalist, what could a 3D journalist do here? He would start from modeling all these objects. And after he has done modeling them, he would start laying out the UVs. I mean, what I mean here is that he would start laying out the UVs, meaning if you take a look at the UV texture editor, you may see that we have created some kind of UVs to lay down, to properly lay down our texture onto this object. Let me just select this one, you may get the same result right here, and you may see how a 3D journalist would approach to create the UVs link. You may see the spoons UVs, you may see the fork UVs, you may see the plate UVs, but a 3D journalist as a whole would start from creating the models. And how did I uh, create these models? Let's take a look at them. If we open up some shots, I started from creating this spoon. I started to blocking it out from a simple geometry, maybe a sphere or something, and I just started to shaping it for the base of the spoon. And after that, what did I do? I just got another version of that in which I created the handle for this spoon. And you can see this is going to shape. So this is what a 3D journalist would start from, blocking out the geometry and shaping it out. And if we take the other version of this spoon, here you can see that the spoon has gotten a little good shape right here. It's been smoothed out, it's been shaped properly, if you can see the details here. And if as a whole we see the final spoon right here, we may see that it's been properly model like that. Now you have almost everything right here. If you create a cam here, uh, you may have a look at the different version of the spoon. 
pipe here. You can see we have created a final spoon right here. I'm going to create a perspective view here, hide down the grid to visualize that. So we have a spoon model here. And after a model is created, the same way if we take a look at another modeling, I model the fork right here. If we take a look at the fork, the same stages I started it with. I started to block in the basic geometry first and then giving it more shapes in different version. And you can see here is another version of the fork. So the same thing I kept moving with, creating different version and getting the proper look and smoothing it out and giving it a proper look. And if we take a look at the last version of the fork, we can see it. The final version, so you can see that's been modeled from a reference and here you can see the final version of the spoon that's been shaped. And how did I combine all those stuff into one shot? It was so easy that I created kind of a dish right here. If you take a look at this, see, the dish was created. And then I reshaped the dish. I placed the spoon. I imported the spoon. I modeled these small chunks of cucumber or tomato just using simple geometrical shapes and shaping them and after that what a compose shot I got was this vegetable dish so the first thing was to place all of them together right here and after I did, I, I've done I've modeled them what did I do I started to link the UVs out. for the cucumber I laid the UVs out if you take a look at the UVs editor right here you can see I laid the UVs for this model to properly assign the texture and shapes to them. And after I also did this for the tomato, but I did not create the UVs for the spoon or even for the fork because I, I did not need to create the UVs for them because I wanted to put some kind of proper shader onto them to get some reflection or even for the plate I did not create the UVs. So what did I do right here on the spoon model? If we take a look, I just assign a DGS material from the mental ray on shaders, the DGS shader, that is the mental ray's default shader to give it a look of a steel kind of stuff. And after I, I done just creating the UVs out or assigning the textures, what did I do? I just started to put some lights in. But what kind of lights were those? I did not use the typical lights like the ones we have right in the Maya. Those lights are the ambient, the directional, the point light, maybe the spotlight, area light, or the volume light. I did not use any of them. Rather, what did I do? I used a HDI image to produce the proper and more realistic result right here onto this shot I use an HDI image and what did I do then I just went to just I did some render setting here I chose the mental ray I gave it some quality stuff like here I added an image based lighting HDI here and I then produce it from just checking on the global illumination so what did it give me as a result then I put a camera right onto here and if we take a look at the result of this, when I take a render of this, you may see the things are properly placed. The texture and shaders are working. We have the reflections. We have our um, effects onto the geometries. We have a proper reflection in a steel kind of stuff like here. So this was how this was how did I lay the UVs, or maybe how did I select it? How did I select the shaders for these two pieces of steel things, or maybe the three pieces of steel, like the dish, the fork, and the spoon here. And what did I do? I just slightly animated this camera. So this was another stage in which I just wanted not to be as a static image, 
I just wanted a sequence so I just animated the camera so as a being a 3d journalist I started from modeling the stuff then I started to creating the UVs laying the UVs out then what did I do I started to um, putting some lights on in which I use the image based lighting meaning the HDRI and after that what did I do I just took the render I did some settings which I needed and then I just animated a camera I didn't add some kind of special effects right here in this shot I because I just wanted to keep it a little simple for the first time as an introduction but maybe I would add some kind of special effects in the maybe in the next week or after the next week for some shots to give you an idea what the special effects would be and how can we deal with them so this is a an overview about a 3d journalist so if you want to be a 3d journalist you should start from modeling the stuff and then you think of laying the UVs out and you think of texture in them maybe you paint the texture and then you think of even uh, creating some kind of rigging control if you need to animate the stuff if you have an organic character right there you may have to go and model that leave the UVs out texture it then you got to rig it then you have to create some rigging controls over there and then you're going to animate that um, character so this was the approach for a 3d journalist hope you have an idea what a 3d journalist be and how do he could handle the thing and stuff like that so this course is purely designed to make you a 3d journalist you will have a complete knowledge of modeling the stuff you will have a complete knowledge of laying the uvs and texturing and painting the stuff you will get a complete knowledge of how the lights are set according to the shots and the requirements you will have a complete knowledge of how do you rig your even the props or the characters and how do you create your controls to animate them and how you finally go and animate them and after that if you need to create some kind of special effects for your shot you will have a complete knowledge of dealing with some kind of special effects in even in Maya or in a different application